Hello YouTubers, this is Average Joe Video back here again. Uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to take a close look at the snowplow from Kubota that goes on the BX series tractor. Now my Kubota is about four years old, it's been a great machine and I really haven't seen any videos that actually go over all the different features. I know there doesn't seem to be very much. Um, I don't even know that I would say the term features as much as I would say just the usability of it. Um, and, and the way you should go about plowing, or at least the way that I go about it. So certainly I'm not a professional, but I have done this many times. So I'm just going to show you some of the tips and tricks that I found, um, and we're going to go from there. So let's go ahead and let's get the tractor started up, and we'll start plowing. Okay, so before we start plowing, I just want to go over a few things here briefly. First of all, what I have is, is I have a model BX1870. Um, a lot of people opt for the larger size tractors, but again, that's all dependent upon your application. I find that the 1870 does more than what I need it to be able to do for my particular property. Um, mine is technically an 1870-1, so mine is actually a, a later model 1870. Um, just for reference, my tractor is about four years old. As you can see, I try to take really good care of it because you have to. I mean, it's expensive. So just to keep that in mind, I mean, even if you have a bigger tractor, you'll have a similar plow setup. So speaking of the plow setup, let's just take a look here. Um, as you can see, I have a model BX2763A plow. And that plow is obviously manufactured by Kubota, so it's a factory plow. The next thing I want to talk about briefly is I'd like to talk about the power angle option. So the hydraulic angle that is and, and that's an option that even though it does cost a little bit it is well worth it in the long run I mean you don't want to have to keep getting up off your tractor to keep angling the blade if that's the case you're just not going to change the angle on it so if you're already working with the convenience of um, the hydraulic setup on your tractor and you're used to using that joystick on there you might as well have the hydraulic unit for the angling as well the other thing you're going to notice on there that I have is the quick hitch assembly and that's essentially required in order to mount any front mounted implement to the front of your BX. So even on the BX80 series that's going to, that's going to be something you're going to see on there. Um, the other thing I want to talk to you about briefly is these little clips. Um, these clips actually can be moved to the bottom hole and they can go around that um, rectangular piece of frame in order to stop the plow from uh, utilizing the trip mechanism. So obviously when you're plowing snow if you hit something that's going to allow it to trip and it's going to reduce the amount of impact that the tractor takes and ultimately that you take riding on the machine. So this plow does have capability when those clips are moved down and over that rectangular assembly on both sides that you can do some light grading. So essentially it's, it's almost like a miniature dozer blade, not quite as powerful of course, but for the homeowner to grade off soil, uh, landscaping, that type of thing, you can use it for that. So that's an option you want to keep in mind. Um, the other thing you want to look at too is the skid shoes. In my particular application, I find the skid shoes to be very beneficial. Once again, that's an add-on option. Um, the thing about the skid shoes is even if you have a perfectly smooth driveway, uh, maybe you have a new home, uh, you just build a house, you just put in a new driveway, in the end, at some point, your driveway may not be as smooth as it is now. So go ahead and opt for those skid shoes. It just allows you to have more control so that when you put the blade into a free-floating position, you're not digging down into your driveway and you're not hitting any type of obstacle that might be there. Uh, in my case, I have a concrete driveway, which is about 30 years old or a little more. And some of my concrete is heaved. So you'll see that I don't take my driveway down to the bare concrete. I could if it were more even, but I choose to set my skid shoes up enough so that I don't hit any of those uneven spots um, and end up basically tearing the bottom of my plow. Even though it's very durable, I don't want to wear out the cutting edge from that, and nor do I want to keep impacting everything with the front end of my tractor. So that's just something to keep in mind as well. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get plowing here. Um, as I'm plowing, the first thing I want to mention to you is, is that you're going to notice that I'm keeping the blade primarily just in a, a straight position as much as possible. Now, since I am coming out of one bay of my garage, it's not ideal because I'm not in the center of my driveway, but I typically do that as my first pass just to make it a little bit easier in terms of cleaning up the driveway, and you're going to see that. The other thing I want to mention to you is, is that I didn't just hop on this tractor, start plowing without allowing it to warm up. If you check your Kubota owner's manual, you will see that 
in the owner's manual it specifies how long the tractor should be warmed up based on the outdoor temperature that you're dealing with so you want to keep that in mind now you're going to notice that when I go to make my second pass I'm going to go ahead and angle the plow now from far away it kind of looked like my plow was angled before but I think I was just going down the driveway a little bit crooked um, but nonetheless you can see that I do have an angle now to my right um, and that's just allowing me to keep all of the snow flowing off to the right hand side okay and then of course I'm going into the um, the pile across the road there I'm stacking it and you can see how easy it is for me to just straighten the blade and to control everything from that joystick that's on board so that's definitely something that is very useful now once again I am gonna angle the blade to the right and I'm just gonna continue to make passes down that side of my driveway um, just to keep the snow flowing off to that side Again, ideally, if I was in the center when I made my first pass, it would give me equal distribution of the snow. But I only have a two-car driveway, so it's only two cars wide, I should say. It's not a big deal. And you're going to see that I'm just going to keep on following that process. Um, one of the mistakes I see a lot of people making is they're always plowing in the straight position. And sometimes there's a reason for that. But remember, when you do that, you always have snow, and, and not just a small amount of snow, going off of both sides of the blade and what that ends up doing is is that just means more cleanup when you're done so the process is not just about being fast but being efficient um, I have this tractor for a reason and that is to make things easier so anytime I can think through the process before I do something of course I want to do that now with that being said I think that the majority of the time it really comes down to just practice I mean, you're going to know your terrain, you're going to know your equipment, and you're going to know how you like to do it and what you prefer. So uh, I always have a truck, my truck usually parked in the driveway in front of my tractor because I just have limited space. So that's one of the things that I try to do is to just move it out of the way first if possible, just easier to work around. If I'm getting a heavy snow, I'll make sure that I have the truck pulled back further. Um, you can see there whenever I was going past the door. I mean, I angled the blade one way quickly, and then I turned the angle the other way. That's the convenience of the hydraulic angling. It's worth every penny. So these are just things that you can keep in mind as you're going through. Um, certainly, this isn't a heavy snow, so there's not really a lot there for me to be concerned about. But I am going to talk about um, the back dragging here in a minute that I'm going to do um, near my vehicle in the other bay. So I'm just going to kind of clean things up, and I like to do that as I go. Sometimes it's very easy to either go way off the edge on your driveway. Um, one way to work around that is to get some driveway markers. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a link to that in the description. I don't have any driveway markers in right now, but I'm gonna put a link to that in the description. So if you're interested in some, I can show you um, at least what I've used in the past. I just haven't had them in again, because we haven't had a lot of snow. We haven't had a lot of deep snow, but if you have a long driveway, and it's very hard for you to tell once you get deep snow where the driveway is and where the ground is you can put those driveway markers in so make sure you check that out as well so as you can see there's my plowed driveway not much to it obviously I don't have a very large driveway but once again it still saves a lot of backbreaking work to shovel uh, it saves the effort of going through with a snowblower I mean you have to keep in mind that most snowblowers you're looking at anywhere from a 22 to a 28 inch cut and in my scenario I'm using a 60 inch blade so the next thing I want to talk to you briefly about is the position of the controls on my tractor so you're gonna notice the obvious one is I'm in four-wheel drive um, I don't recommend plowing when you're not in four-wheel drive It just gives you better traction that's kind of an obvious one the next thing you're going to notice is is that I do have the tractor in high range so the universal symbol you can see there it's in the position where the rabbit is it's in high range uh, if I had heavy wet snow I would move that lever down to the turtle position so that that way I would get a lot more um, a lot more torque out of everything but again for this snow it's not heavy it's not really wet it's a very uh, light snowfall so I left it in high range Something else you want to think about too uh, when you're equipping your tractor for plowing is you want to think about the tires. Um, I just have turf tires and that's because basically I'm using this machine primarily for mowing and for a lot of tasks around my yard. 
Um, I find that the turf tires are doing just fine for me in the winter. A lot of people ask if I put chains on there, and I do not. Uh, in your application, you may need chains. Obviously, I'm also plowing down a driveway with a grade, so that helps me out in that regard as well. Um, these are all just things to consider if you're thinking about a plow for your BX. You just want to make sure that you've thought through all the different options and the scenarios that you might, you might encounter. Um, the next thing I'm going to talk to you about here briefly is we're going to talk about the down pressure of this blade. The down pressure of this blade is unbelievable. You can put so much down pressure on this blade that it will actually lift up the front end of the tractor. That's something that you're not going to be able to do on a traditional snow plow on the front of a pickup truck or even just um, a modified plow that uses electric over hydraulic. You're not going to be able to do that. Don't get me wrong. I mean, the Boss plow is an excellent plow. I'm not just bashing Boss in any way. I'm just saying that for a tractor, I don't understand why you would want to modify it in a way to accept a plow that operates off of what's called electric over hydraulic. So you essentially have um, electric power that is running your hydraulic pump and that's carrying out the hydraulic tasks. Whereas on this particular unit, you're actually using the diesel engine to run the pump and that's how it works. So we're going to look at that here. I'm actually going to show you a demonstration of the down pressure. Uh, I'm also going to show you how I back drag and that's important that you have good down pressure to be able to back drag. So let's take a look at that and see how that works. So if I start it up here and I move the blade down, I want you to watch what happens um, with the blade in this particular case. And I want you to watch how it's able to actually pick up the front wheels off the ground. That's the amount of down pressure that we're talking about. So you can see it's completely off of the ground. Now, we're going to talk here in a minute about the advantages and disadvantages in terms of having the front wheels off the ground. Obviously, you don't want to operate your tractor that way, but the point is, that's how much down pressure we're talking about. When is the last time you've seen uh, a truck that's able to put its snow blade down and pick the front end of the truck up? Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate the back dragging, and this is the importance of the down pressure. So. I'm going to get as close as I can to the building, and you notice I picked the front end up just enough, and then I can back drag, and that allows me to scrape that snow clear. Uh, even if you had a, a larger blade, back dragging is essential, especially when you're getting up against buildings, in this case garage doors, etc. There's no other way to do that. Now, I like to leave my garage door up because then I can back drag the whole way and take all that snow out. And you can see that I have the wheels a little bit up off the ground too much because me steering is not doing anything. You want to try to reach a happy medium between the wheels being up off of the ground with the pressure, but you don't want them off the ground the entire way. You just want to just enough to take the pressure off of the front wheels so that when you're backing up, um, you're putting the pressure on that blade and you're able to clear it down to the... Um, down to the bare surface if you can. Now again, I have my skid shoes there, so I'm not gonna get it down to the bare surface, but the back dragging is still an important task. And that's the importance of the down pressure that I was telling you about. So you can see there, I'm just taking a minute to finish clearing that up. But again, these blades are very useful. I mean, you use them just in the same way that you would use a larger blade on a truck. You can see when I was back dragging, you've gotta reach a, a medium between picking the tractor the whole way up off the ground and then losing the front wheel traction. You just want to put enough pressure there that you can keep the blade down and have enough down pressure that you are getting most of the snow. And then you also want to make sure that you still don't lose the traction in the front. So you can feel it as soon as it starts to pick up. Um, I actually picked it up a little bit too far, but for the most part, it still worked. Uh, I still need to clean up this side over here. But you can see with this small machine, 18 horsepower diesel, um, that's a 60 inch blade. You can see the amount of work I was able to do very quickly. So even if you have a big lane, um, even if you have a shale driveway, again, then you're going to want to have the skid shoes on there. You can set it up and you can go from there. So then what I generally do when I'm all done is I just go around and clean up whatever I would like to do. If I see any major trails of snow, I'll, I'll clear that. But I just wanted to go through the basics so that you can see how versatile this blade is. Um, the only downside, which I don't even know is really a downside, but some may consider that, is if you didn't already notice, there's a lot of hydraulic line for the hoses running to my plow. 
And I don't know if that's just because that's how the individual shops manufacture and make them, or if they came in from the factory like that from Kubota. I mean, this was bought brand new from the dealer. I'm assuming that that came in from the factory from Kubota. But nevertheless, um, if the hoses were a little bit shorter, I think that would be helpful. But of course, you don't want them too short. Uh, I really haven't had any issues as far as that's concerned. But why not harness the power of the tractor? Why not use its hydraulic pressure and hydraulic force to be able to get the task done? Uh, and that's what I'm saying. I mean, with this little plow in here, to me, it's so much more versatile than having a truck plow because I don't have a big enough driveway. Now, if you're someone who's going to be traveling around and doing a lot of plowing accounts, well, then certainly then you may want to have a plow on your, on your truck. That makes sense. But when you compare the cost of it, I mean, an average truck plow is about $5,000. You're looking at $5,000 for a truck plow. And this setup right here, I think it's somewhere around $1,500, $1,600 with the power angle on there. Um, it's not it's not ridiculously expensive it, that's still a lot of money of course but again in the big scheme of things the amount of plowing you can get done and this is very agile with how small my property is in terms of my driveway and where I need to go I'm able to do that and I have the, the ability to have this joystick right here the newer models of course your joystick is going to be over here in the rear of the fender but I mean Kubota makes a great product uh, and Kubota if you're watching this I mean hats off to a well engineered machine and certainly if, if there's ever an opportunity to test equipment I'd, I'd love to do that because I think you make a great product. So for the size of property I have and for what all I get done, this machine really does the job. So hopefully that gives you a good idea about the BX2763A Snowblade. Um, and I hope that you have a great day. So if you liked what you saw today, please do me a favor and give it a thumbs up. And definitely click that subscribe button because you're going to see a lot more videos.